what's up, y'all? Just Rhonda. We know why we're here. Let's get into Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 8, Episode 3. Like the video, subscribe to my channel. Not a whole lot going on over here. It was pleasantly boring. <laughs> I wasn't even mad at it. Um, oops. I don't know. We're just in season three. I feel like they're just they're still trying to set things up for whatever the season is going to be. I don't think they have. No, we do know over here in Huntsville, most of the show has already played out, though. So the show is like a recap of what has happened on social media over the last few months while they weren't filming. Um, Melanie meets up with Nell. Because, you know, Nell, I mean, Mel don't fool with these people when she's... um. Not filming, she's off doing the things that you know Mel be doing. Um, they're playing pickleball, it was cute. I don't play pickleball. I'm like, tennis is hard enough as it is. Now, you want me to play it like ping pong on a tennis court? Mm -mm. You know, Melanie go running around asking everybody why they didn't come to the podcast. Listen. The podcast, the cast of Love and Marriage Huntsville should have been provided, you know, tickets to the podcast by Carlos King. It was his podcast tour. Um, when I have events, I have a guest list of people. And when they get to the venue, their name is on the list and whoever, however many guests they have with them, you know, Jam plus five. Get them a table. Apparently they didn't do that. They were expected to pay for tickets and that sounds stupid. So that's why they didn't come. I mean, <laughs> ciao. Nell doesn't know why she didn't come. I don't know why she didn't come either. Now, why you didn't come? You made a lot of excuses on why you, you know, the internet was broken and you was out of town and they sold out of tickets and you had a couple few excuses. I don't buy any of them. I don't know why you didn't come. I don't say because you're scared of the millimeters. Y'all millimeters is not doing, you know, any services to yourself because the people don't want to come to places where y'all are at. And I've seen some of y'all out here in these streets doxing people and getting the YouTube channel striked and um, going out of people's warehouse. Like, it's one thing to be a fan of Mel, and it's a whole other thing to be, you know, trying to disrupt people's real life. If... You're on your day off doing things to, you know, avenge Mel's honor. If you never actually met her, take a nap. That's all I'm saying. People didn't want to come because of the millimeters. That's the excuse some of them are using, I suppose. And depending on who you are, I mean, I wouldn't either. Like if I was Kimmy and um, Tisha, I probably wouldn't. Definitely not Destiny. Oh, she really should be glad she didn't go. Anyway, Nell asked Mel about, you know, Martel getting arrested and she, you know, I, didn't, I don't like to see a black man go to jail if he don't have to. I think Martel should get arrested every single day. I think Martel should wake up, brush his teeth, get arrested. I think he should wake up, brush his teeth. He don't have no hair. Oh, I don't know. Eat his breakfast, get arrested. Every single day, Martel should get arrested until further notice. Maybe he'll learn his lesson. You know that that movie where you you know you keep having that dream. You wake up have the same day over and over and over. That's what should happen to Martel. He should just keep having parts of his day and and get arrested till it sinks in. Nell. And I don't know what your son did, but don't use that as an excuse. Like did the police innocently drag this young man to jail, or did he do something that he you know got arrested? You know what I'm saying? So. You don't make sense now. She talks about being accused of being of, of, of Chris's stepdaughter. See, she was all this stuff was happening on the social media streets. I try to tell y'all that's where the show really happens. Then we come over here 
and watch them try to explain it poorly. St uh, Chris's daughter was over here doing interviews with someone. I don't know because I didn't hear it, but I heard about it. She was over here saying that Mel was a side chick. And uh, can we next year, 2025, bury side chicks? I don't want to hear that term no more. Y'all need to stop with the side chick thing. Chris was getting a divorce from this lady and there was some crossover. We're going to call it crossover because that's what niggas do. They always have a crossover. They're never actually all the way single. Unless you catch them in college or something, they still probably got a slide. And it happens like that because they mean needing harems around. Even for when they're not like like this boy Clay that's been all in the internet because he was over there with the porn star girl um, arguing with his mama on the internet. Please stop bringing AD in this conversation because she's over there living her best life. Clay is over here doing what Clay was doing before we met him. He's just doing it on a more public scale. My point is they'd be over here having a harem and then when it's, they find one that they like, then you know they have to undo that nest that they've created for themselves and that's what creates the crossover. Women be over here preparing to find the man of their dreams. That's, you know, that's what they told y'all. Prince Charming and all. Anyway, kissing frogs and things. Um, Nell says she wasn't no side chick. I mean, yeah, you were. If he was still married, whether you knew or didn't know, that's how that is. Not the same thing as Kimmy over here um, pursuing the man down to the barbershop that she saw him on Instagram. That's... um. That's some different type of side chick thing. And she could keep trying to explain that all she want to, but she explained it. Now we see it. And then, and she over here requiring, what's her name? Kiowa. She looking for Kiowa to, um, you know, fix it. Child. Anyway, now don't worry about it. You and Chris been married 30 years. Nobody sees you as a side chick. And, and, you know, we know Chris has some cheating ways. He cheated on you. So, I also don't believe that men are stillable. So, if he got with Nell, it's because he was done over there. That's it. That's all. Unless you're Martel. That's why he should just get arrested. Stormy meets up with her friend Trish. This is a new cast member. She's the personal trainer. It is what it is. I don't have nothing necessarily to say about uh uh what's her name? Tish Trish, not another Trish. Y'all think y'all funny. Anyway, she um they're bringing her on by way of who? I mean, she has a lot of connections. She's a trainer, so Destiny be over at the gym and Martel and Marcel. She's a trainer, her and her man at this gym where all of them go to. Um, Destiny spoke to her about training Letitia. She wanted to meet up with Stormy and see if like it's cool. And Stormy's like, yeah, why not? Um, young lady, Tisha, Tisha, you are a trainer. That's it. That's all. Like, don't be calling up, should I train the girl? Do you, are you taking clients or not? Don't even make sense. She's going to come over there with Destiny and work out. But, you know, this is how she wants to introduce herself. She wants to come in as a, you know, I'm a little feisty, don't start none, won't be none type of chick. So we haven't seen that yet because she's right now acting very meek and quiet um, underneath lots of hair. And, um, a man with big muscles. Stormy was like, girl, hire, take the girl on as a client and go make, make your money. What are, we, what are we talking about? They talk about her ex-husband and how, you know, Stormy wants to call him Mr. So I don't know. It's like she was married to this man. Her and Stormy may have been close at one time because she used to be Stormy's client when she was behind the chair. She was Stormy was in her wedding, but she doesn't seem to know a lot about this man that um, 
Stormy is calling Mister, so it's not like they had any type of relationship as a couple with with um her and her ex. So anyway, out with the old. We don't know him. His name is Mister, and in with the new. I can't remember his name right now. Tish was saying that you know her new man has a lot of calming energy, and she she's tends to be in a feisty place and he brings her on down and she doesn't know what to do with that, you know, because you can't argue with somebody that's not arguing with you. And, you know, Stormy says she can relate to that. And she said um, she remembers a time when she was um, out there stabbing the grass. And I was like, yeah, I like that idea, Stormy. They're going to say you was crazy for stabbing the grass, but I don't think so. I think if that's how you, uh, um, uh, you know, ex get what do you call it? Transfer that energy? Because it got to go somewhere so you don't explode. If that's how you do it, just, just be careful. Don't cut yourself. So Stormy and Courtney are over here at this car dealership and they're looking at these classic, you know, pimped out rides and they're discussing, you know, baby number two. This time they're going to go with a surrogate. They've decided to do it. Uh, Courtney wants a boy. Um, yeah, I think that's, a, you know, that's a dope journey. I like Stormy and Courtney as a couple. I think their son is absolutely adorable. If she is prepared for this journey and had a very difficult pregnancy, they have enough coin to do it. I look forward to seeing her, you know, again, be a mom. And she get to keep her body snatched. Winning. They give us a little more of this new couple. Um, she has a son and a daughter. He has a daughter that he claims from his previous marriage, although she's not his biological daughter. He's still, you know, part of her life. Um, they're both gym rats, so you know they seem like they got a lot in common. Um, they talk about wanting to have a wedding and things. We'll see. We'll see. They're not married yet. They're just a couple. Um, we'll see. When she says things like, you know, don't start no more be none, I was like, uh oh. Who was over there saying that? Somebody feisty. Everybody feisty. Everybody feisty says that. Don't start no more be none. Then be the one starting shit. Melly, Melanie, Kimmy, and Tisha, they have a work meetup. Let's call it what it is. And with these three, I think, trying to figure out, because there is no six, core six. They have gone past that. This is not the same core six. Some of the sixes, you know, they still there, but they didn't split up. They're not coupled up anymore. Um, I do prefer them being pleasant with each other versus... Um, just the fighting and stuff between Tisha and um, Mel, and it, it, it gets too dark. Um, Kimmy said her mom had breast cancer, so she was fighting through that. I do like Kimmy's natural hair. It's just a, lo a, a lot less going on for us to be distracted by. She the uh, um, uh, the way Kimmy was acting, her mother's result is, is in a positive place. So, you know, there was no, but she said they have, they have been consumed with that. They don't obviously spend time together. So they're on a meetup. And when they met up in the, when the show started, even though Mel brought them on, I feel like Mel has elevated to a place where she making boss decisions as it relates to the show. And so I guess they're trying to figure out how to navigate that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, the respect and the disrespect of it all. They all got their own things going on. She just managed to do her solo, got rid of her baggage and, you know, Tisha. Tisha could do the same. You know what I'm saying? You got to make mistakes before you get it right. That's all I can say about that. Kimmy, I don't think has any problems. She's over there handling her businesses. So Tisha's office is still not ready. And I'm told y'all last season when she was unwrapping them stools that who, nobody brings furniture into a building that ain't got the walls and plaster up yet. But okay. Girl. They asked what's the tea on Martell. She tells him the whole real behind the scenes story, how he was over here with his baby mama threatening, you know, to put out some revenge porn and 
they basically was like, oh, well, we didn't know it was going like that. And so, yeah, now we understand why you did what you did and he should get arrested every day. That's not what they said. That's what I said. Then they get on the why haven't I heard from you? I was like, this is the fake shit. Y'all haven't heard from each other because y'all don't talk to each other. And then you're sitting here trying to figure out, you're right. I could have called. I, Kimmy's like, let me make sure. I did call. I called. The, the thing was full and I left a message. Just don't come over here with that stormy shit about why didn't I go in your DMs and stuff. <clears throat> and of course, why didn't they come to the podcast? They didn't come to the podcast because the millimeters. And the millimeters do be out here doing a lot. And so as far as Kimmy and Tisha is concerned, I see why they didn't go. Uh, Tisha says she didn't go because last time she went to your thing uninvited, she, she got escorted out with security. And she did. So I can't even be mad at that either. You're not going to have another opportunity to kick me out of anything. That's always done. Unless you tell me in the mail, you be wishy-washy. Now, last time you had your uh, name changing ceremony, they weren't invited because it's not that type of personal. This time, you want to know why they didn't come to the podcast? Well, B, you didn't invite us to the last thing. We don't know which thing we're supposed to come to and which thing we're not. We dare sure not going to go over there and get these crazy ladies of, of Huntsville a chance to be disrespectful you can't say wasn't nobody gonna do that because you don't know what these people be out here doing these streets no more so um they said sunny told them the podcast was negative and she was like it was negative for her because the people was over there saying that they was she was not right for coming over there scooping up dusty's man and they were right she wasn't right not none of it right we haven't gotten to the meat and potatoes of anything, and that's pretty much like how dry and dull that daggone episode was. I'm not mad at the new couple. Seems like they'll be interesting. They do make sense. If if we going to have a show here, we got to have people to get to know. Stormy needs to have her own friends. I don't like how, you know, you got to come in and go through the core six, like, Stormy is here. She is a familiar face. And then this couple seem like they, you know, they um mesh with Stormy and Courtney. They already know everybody because they all be down to the gym. So it shouldn't be hard to get used to them. This lady did, did not come in like Tiffany did, like blasting people with the birthday party and things. So you got to give it a chance. Um Mel and Kimmy and Tisha are not ever going to be like friends like that. So every time they get together, it's going to be a hey girl um, business luncheon and catch up on things and talk about what, what's been going on in people's life. And I think it's better like that and don't have like the husbands there because husbands um be disrupting the sauce. The husbands that come with Tisha and um. And Kimmy, they're not like that kind of, you know, group no more. It would have to, if they're going to do that, you know, obviously Mel will be on tour or something, releasing singles and things. All right, y'all. Like the video, subscribe to my channel. And we'll be back. Ooh, when I see y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. We're going to talk about the vineyard and, you know, I got a lot to say about that. Bye, y'all.